Hello and good morning. So today we're going to continue with my player own ports series. Um, and today we're going to spend uh, most of the episode simply looking at crew types and captains and what you can do with your crew um, and the best ways to sort of prioritize your missions and go through each region, talking about the different crew types and the tips and tricks I've kind of picked up to maximize um, your missions. So if we go to my crew uh, up on the top here, and we'll just go through all the units I have. Now, bearing in mind I'm in the final region, so I have basically all the best crew in the game. Um, what I'm going to do is, with the use of the uh, RS Wiki, I'm going to go back and show you some of the units from the previous regions and uh, just display the different types of units that there are, what you can expect from them, and what to do when you get to new regions. So um, if we hop into my crew here, you can see uh, that I have neatly arranged all my crew types for you um, just to put them into types. Now we can look at them by just simply collect, clicking on them here and we can see the unit traits down here and the statistics. So what I've done here is just organize them into types in terms of rows this way. We'll worry about the captains here in a second. So you can see at the top here, this is the ferocious tiger rider. Um, now, as I've said to you before, there are different types of crew units um, in each region. Now, the basic three main types of units are the combat, morale, and seafaring unit. And in this instance, you can see I've got these guys here are my combat units. So in the final region, this would be the ferocious tiger riding. You can see here that the combat stat is very, very heavily weighted to combat, so 2,290. So I've got all five of them in this row. And then here... In the final region, the morale unit is called the Travelling Band, and here the sea faring unit is called the Harim of Fortune Tellers. Now, <coughs> excuse me there. Now, what you have in each region, uh, generally, my philosophy when doing player imports is to have five of each single type of statistic or style um, now the reason that is is because most often you're going to want to be sending out missions that are one or two styles in terms of percentage so it might be a mission for 1000 morale and 1000 seafaring or 1000 morale and 1000 combat if it's not that generally you'll be sending out um, a mission that is just singularly one combat um, one style so let's say it was combat or seafaring so it generally pays in my opinion to have five of the basic singular type of units um, and as i say in, in the final region these would be these three here now the two rows we have below again are slightly more special units but uh, we'll look at those in a second so for now um, i'm just going to take you back using the rs wiki here and show you the types of unit uh, through each region. Again, this is the RS Wiki page here, so credit to them for it. So in the first region here, you can see the arc. Um, these are the units that you start with. Now, they obviously have far less statistics uh, in terms of their unit, but you've got to remember that mission types are going to be an awful lot smaller. They're going to take 20 minutes and not require a lot. So don't get worried that my units you've just seen of 2,000 plus and these have 70. Uh, it's, it's tiered up. So when you start off, these are the three you get. So the first thing I would do um, is to buy five of each of these. Uh, and then you can see here that when you're in the arc, you also get access to the Varric Chef, Brimhaven Pirate, and the Cathedral Fisherman, which instantly double up your stats. So what I would do is I would get these. As you can see, if you look at the cost to recruit, these guys are free. So initially you can get these guys. And then when you've got a, some chimes, enough chimes, you start buying these guys here. Um, so what this will enable you to do, obviously, is instantly start doing missions quicker and you'll be able to get your stats up. So what I'm going to do now is just pop back and explain a little bit more about how the crew units work. So on the screen, you can see here in the top left hand corner, there's a little one, two, three and four. This simply refers to the boat that that unit is currently stationed on. So I have four ships. Um, so that's why one, two, three, four. So don't need to worry too much about that, though it is quite useful. Again, it's the same with the captain's top left-hand corner. Here, in the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see there's numbers of units. Uh, and if we select this guy, um, and then we go down to the statistics here, which show a bit more, we can see that it says Ferocious Tiger, it's the name, crew unit, and level nine. 
So basically, all of your crew start at, obviously, level 1, or in fact, level naught, should I say, if you look there, and they go all the way up to level 10. So, for instance, this morale unit is as high as you can possibly go. That's a level 10 travelling band, so the highest morale stat, and he is 2,420. So I can't actually get him any higher in terms of his stat. So we'll just pop back to the Ferocious Tiger Rider. And you'll see, yeah, that it just displays the statistics... St can't say that word. Statistics here. Um, and, yeah, they start on level zero, uh, and they'll have a base statistic to start at. So if we pop onto the RS Wiki again, and we just scroll down, you will see here Ferocious Tiger Rider. So its base statistic is 1,200. Um, and there's its cost and the region it's from, obviously. So you can see that when I bought this unit at level 0, it had the 1,200 combat, and it now has uh, 2,290, and that's at level 9, or if we go, it'll be the same, 1,200, and that's gone to 2,420. So if you take those units all the way through their 10 levels, they'll gain essentially double the statistic they start with. Now, this is a really important thing to think about. So what a lot of people do, if we hop back to our units, is they start here and they'll get themselves in the first region, let's say they get themselves three Varric Chefs and they train them up uh, to, let's say, level six or seven, level eight. And let's say they have, um, by now, nearly double the statistic or whatever. But that's taken them quite a lot of missions. So your, your crew units will gain XP for every mission that you send them on. Um, and obviously, if you complete a full mission, they'll get more XP. And eventually, they will start leveling up. And as they level up, obviously, we've discussed their stats go up. So if you spend a bit of time in each region and you use the crew from each region, then their stats will start going up. But the really important thing to know is to not get too attached to your crew, <laughs> which is something I did. Uh, because if you look here, so this is the arc, uh, and you start with the Varric Chef, he starts on 150. Let's say you get him up to about 250. So if we just quickly scroll down to the next region, okay, the Eastern Bannerman, right, which is the equivalent morale unit of the Varric Chef. Now he starts on 350. So to put that into context, you'd have to take the Varric Chef to possibly even level 8, 9 or 10, <clears throat> depending on the rate of XP, which I really don't know, with the lower units, um, to get him up to the starting amount. So you might have a Varric Chef that's level 8, and an Eastern Bannerman on level naught will have more morale. So I guess what I'm saying here is whenever you get to a new region... It actually pays to go into your crew, select them all, and dismiss them, and buy new ones. Okay? So, you can see here that I've got a card sharp uh, available on this side. This is all the crew that you can buy. We'll go through that in a second. But just for argument's sake. Now, the card sharp is from the fourth region. So, you can see here, he starts on 750 at a cost of 1,000 chimes and 140 cherry wood. Now, if we, let's say we had been in the hook and we just got our Blazing Lantern Clansman. Now, we might have leveled him up so to maybe, let's say, level six. And he might have, I don't know, 800 morale. Now, then you look at the card sharp and you start thinking, well, do I want to spend money on a new unit that's got less stats? And this is where some people slightly go wrong. Um, because in the first instance, yes, if you sack your... Blazing Lantern Clansman, who's got, let's say, 850, and you hire a card shop that's got 750, yes, you're losing 100 morale first up. But then you've got to think about how quickly these units will uh, level up, and therefore their stats will get a lot better a lot quicker. So I guess what I'm trying to say is to not get too attached to the individual crew in each region. And what I think, personally, the important thing to do is, is when you get into a new region is to start to look to get rid of your three rows here of the basic crew and upgrade them to the new ones. Now, that doesn't mean you just have to fire every single one of them as soon as you get into the region. Far from it. But each time you have enough resources free to purchase a new unit, 
I would recommend doing that and get that unit straight out on missions as soon as you can. Uh, the benefit of this is, as we've just discussed, all your crew will start upgrading very quickly. Um, and so if we, if we just look through, again, if we just look at the basic units here, 150 then into the next region with Skull, we have the Eastern types, so Eastern Bannerman, Musketeer and Guide, and obviously they jump up again, and then to the next region they jump, and then the Cherry with the Scythe region here again they jump up, and then into the fifth region, the Bowl, and then they start to get quite good now, so 1000, and then into the final region they start on 1200. So I suppose the difficult decision comes in if you end up having, let's say, you are in the bowl, the fifth region with a far crier. Now you might have a level 10 far crier, which is what I had a little while ago. Um, so a level 10 far crier actually had 2000 morale. When I'd upgraded it all the way, I had one of these, it was level 10 and it was 2000 morale. So if I go and look at my lowest uh, traveling uh, band, which would be this guy. So you can see that I sacked a level 10 Far Crier, who was a morale unit with 2000 morale, and I sacked it for um, a, where are they? A traveling band. So I sacked a unit with 2000 morale for a unit that now only has, that starts with 1200 morale. So that's quite a significant loss, okay? Now I understand that that presents itself as being quite difficult to get your head around. But then if you look further on to some of the units that I've got now, this level 8. So when I get to level 8, that's now 2,160. Level 9, 2,300. And then finally at level 10, that's 2,420. So I've now got 420 more morale than I would have had I used that fire cryer. Now it takes a little bit of time to get them up to that stat. Sure, I completely understand that. But the thing to do is to keep some of these units from the previous region and then upgrade them as you can so like i said don't just get rid of every single one of them and then try and find replacements i i tend to replace them one at a time as and when i can so talking of replacements um i'll just quickly talk about how you get to your new crew now here you can see there's a section um which is very much like the mission section in so much as it has uh available missions here and you have this little button here that siphons through so say we're looking for a particular type of crew now i don't want to hire either of these guys here so if i click this little arrow it'll bring up a new unit for me and there's a far cry um, and i've lost one of my available re-rolls so that all it does is just display the types of crew that i'm able to hire um, and if i was to hire them i would just select them and then recruit now at the moment you can see i don't actually have any space free uh, so you can uh, you can hire obviously up to twenty five crew. That's your full inventory, um, and here they all displayed. So that's how you basically select your new crew. Um, you just siphon through and find the ones that you want. Obviously, if you're in a particular region, then you're more likely to uh, get that type of crew. Um, and obviously, you can't get crew from the sixth region until you get to the sixth region. So you can see here that's a hurry in the fortune tellers. And again, that starts on 1,200. Um, so yeah, these are the three basic units, and that's what I would recommend you have, five of each. Um, and again, just looking through, you can see, if you want to go to this page, just Google Player Imports Crew, and you'll get this page here. Now, we're just going to talk about some of the other types of unit, which is where it becomes a bit more important and interesting. Now, this again is down to personal preference. Um, so... I will just tell you what I've got, and I'll tell you some of the things that I've had. So, you, as I said before, there are some units that display two types of stat. So, if we look here at this Sea Witch, you'll see that it's a seafaring and morale unit. Uh, again, here we have the Feral Chimera, which is a morale and combat. The Jade Golem, which is morale and combat. Uh, and this unit here, which is just morale, it's a Jade Merchant. We'll talk about that in a second. So for now, we'll just discuss the, the two stat units. Um, now, if we go back to our RS Wiki, and we'll, we'll just go through the ones that are available first. So in the first region, you see the Bamboo Golem, um, and that starts with Morale and Combat, and also the Cyclops. Now, I'll just quickly talk about special units. If you go to the map... Um, here very occasionally in your 
uh, in your mission logs here, you'll see a type of mission that appears with a little map symbol and it will say um, a particular region of the map that you need to go and explore. Now what that does is it opens up uh, a particular island in each region that you're then able to access which gives you the crew. So if we look over here, the Cyclops in the Ark is the first special crew you can see. Now all these units are found, as you can see, unlock area, the Ark. Now this is Cyclosis. So what you have to do to be able to recruit the Cyclops for him to appear in your crew listing, you need to have actually done the mission that unlocks Cyclosis the island. So if we look on the map here again, you'll see this is the first region, the Ark, and down at the bottom here is a little island called Cyclosis. This won't appear until you've done the Cyclosis mission. Um, they're not particularly difficult missions, and all they do is they just unlock that region, and it allows you then to find the crew, and he will appear in here and you can hire him. Uh, but so if we just go back to the RS Wiki, you'll see that's the first one in the first region. We have this guy here. Um, there are, there's generally a special island in each region. So again, in the next region, it's the Siren Whale Rider, who you can see is a combat and seafaring unit, which is quite unusual. Um, and then in the hook, it's the Feral Chimera, which is morale and combat. Uh, the Sea Witch in the scythe, which is morale and seafaring. And then in the fifth region, in the bowl, it's actually the Judge of Dice, who is a tribred unit. We'll get onto him in a second. And lastly, in the final region, the Shambling Lair, which is the ox head and horse face, who again is a tribred unit. So they are the, um, the special types of unit that you can get. But you have to unlock them via the map, as I said. So. Once you've done that, uh, you, you will start seeing them in here. The other types that I have, so yeah, the Feral Chimera. Um, why I have him is he has a special uh, ability on his crew called Rallying Cry. Now, if you hover over here, you'll see um, that it displays two traits that the unit has. First one is Eagle Eyed, improves seafaring. The second one is all XP gains for this crew member's boat are increased by 10%. So what I use this guy for is, when I buy a new crew, like this mission, if I can squeeze the Feral Chimera onto a seafaring mission that only needs four units, so I can pop him into here, then I will, because it will improve the XP that's gained. So that's why I have him. Um, the Sea Witch, I have two of those, and they're level 10, purely because they give both seafaring and morale, and they're the kind of best um, option for those two. And then the Jade Golem, uh, is morale and combat as we said and he has staunch which is quite a useful ability although I hope never to use it uh, reduced chance to partial mission success uh, this will the, basically the the staunch uh, ability allows the jade golem to give its life for another crew so if you're in a mission and uh, it fails and one of your crew is going to die the guy, jade golem will sacrifice itself uh, that's not really the reason I have the unit um, the reason is I have it for its morale and combat. Um, so they're the four that I have. I'm actually going to get rid of the Feral Chimera eventually because there will come a stage where I don't need uh, its rallying cry ability. So I'd rather have another Jade Golem just because it has slightly better base stats. So if we go and look for the Feral Chimera here, that's 350, 500. Whereas if you look at the Jade Golem, that's 450, 450. Oh, sorry can't read 400 650 so once you chain a drake train a jade golem up all the way uh, it will have better stats than a feral chimera and you can see here a level 9 820 morale 1235 combat whereas the feral chimera is 730 1000 um, the other special unit i have here is the ardoon uh, sorry not the ardoon shopkeeper the jade merchant uh, now his ability is merchant and what he does is basically improve the goods retrieved from a mission by 30%. So if you pop him onto a boat and you gain, let's say, uh, 100 chimes, then you'll get 30% more um, just by having him on board. Uh, the reason I keep him is for when you get to the final trades good missions, uh, he becomes very useful, but we'll talk about that in a later video. Um, so there are the, the five kind of special units I use here. 
and the three below I use I have three judge of dice and two ox head horse face now as I said uh, earlier we looked on the the unit types here and you could see that I had tribred units now the first one is the judge of dice so we'll talk about him first but before we do that I'm just going to take you back and show you the first type now there are what you might call secondary captain units or in the first region instead of it being the judge of dice it's called the first mate now he's a tribred unit so you get all three stats with him and it's 50 of each now his ability here is called solidarity if we hop over to the judge of dice here and hover over solidarity solidarity gives plus 100 to all stats per unique crew member aboard right so what that means is if I put a judge of dice on a ship and then add one, the four remaining crew, if I put one that's different, so let's say I put a Jade Gollum, a Sea Witch, a uh, Harima Fortune Tellers and a Travelling Band on, I would get plus 100 for each of those on every stat. So I would get 400 plus on every stat just for putting them on. So to do, think about it another way, if I put the judge of dice on and I put all four of the remaining slots as a traveling band i would only get plus 100 per crew per um statistics so seafaring morale combat and speed so if i put four different types on i'm going to get plus 400 so that becomes really 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 useful especially when you're trying to do missions that have multiple statistics uh or style should i say not statistics um because trying to get all three styles up is quite tricky um and if we go back to the start here, you'll see that the first mate has a solidarity of plus 25 uh, rather than 100. And then the next region, uh, the first mate character becomes the Eastern Overseer, and that's a solidarity of plus 50. Um, in the next region, there isn't actually uh, a first mate equivalent. Uh, you have the Slate Golem and the Feral Trimera. Um, so you get the Slate Golem just from the Hook region as it is, and then obviously the Feral Trimera comes from the Trimera Straits Island. Uh, then into the Scythe, then you see the Bureaucrat appear, and he's obviously plus 75, can you see a pattern here? And then in the fifth region, uh, you get the Judge of Dice. Now he is a special island unit, so you won't get him until you've done his mission. But as I said, he gives a solidarity of plus 100, and he starts with all four stats 450, which is a lot. So if we go back here and look, at, I've got two level 10s here and they have 900 apiece. Well, that has 910. Um, they all have 900 basically apiece and they give solidarity, which is incredibly important when you're trying to raise all three styles or indeed two styles. So say it was a morale and combat mission. If I put a judge of dice on and then popped on two feral chimeras and two traveling bands, I'd get plus 200 for each stat just for having him on board. So he becomes very, very useful. Um, and then the final unit, which is from the very last region, and is, again, the special island unit, is the Oxhead and Horseface. And this guy is incredibly useful um, for all manner of regions. So if you look at, I have a level nine here, he starts on 600 apiece. And now he's already up to 1,100 and he's only level nine. So by the time I finish, he should be, well, 1,300 per style, I would hope. Uh, I've just recently bought another one, and you can see that he starts there with 600. Um, and his ability here, he has uh, a resurrect. So if you lose a crew member in a mission, he resurrects them from beyond the grave um, and saves them. So they come back as a, what are they called? A drowned ghost. Um, so that's what happens so instead of completely losing the crew you at least manage to keep them um, I've just actually noticed this is bringing me on to another good point that I've recruited this crew member and he's actually got a negative trait so if we talk about traits for a second as I was showing you on various of these special units they all have these traits here rallying cry some are specific to units so as we've talked about the first mates it's always solidarity with the Sea Witch, she has Resurrects as well. Um, the Feral Chimera has that Rallying Cry, and the Jade Golem has Staunch. Now, the other traits that you might see here 
eagle-eyed, for instance, improved seafaring. Now, these are completely random. When you hire units, they just sometimes get these uh, traits. Or when you send them out on a mission, sometimes they pick them up. So you'll see that some of these units here, for instance, have no traits. Uh, let's see if any of them have a trait. Tough as nails. Now, I've picked this one up. Chance to avoid death. Most of the traits are really beneficial. They completely happen at random, apart from with the captains, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, but most of the time, they're just completely random, quick-footed, improved speed. So that's obviously a good one. If we go and look at the Feral Chimera, plucky, improved combat. So I'm lucky there that I've got a combat unit that's got a combat trait. Now, there's no way of controlling this whatsoever. Um, it just happens at random. Eager, let's see what eager is. Eager is improved morale. Again, lucky there, that's a morale. No, that's a combat unit, so that's a shame. And let's go through some of the seafaring ones. You might have a trait plucky again. Unfortunately, I hadn't noticed this till now. I've just hired uh, a new Oxhead horse face because I only had one of them, and it's taken me about three weeks to finally get one to come around when I was scrolling through my missions. Um, unfortunately, he's picked up a negative trait, which is a bit of a pain. If you hover over here, you can see he has mutinous, which means increased risk of captain death. Um, <laughs> now, that's not a good trait. So obviously, if I send a mission out with less than 100%, um, there is a chance I'll fail the mission, as we know. But if I have that unit on board, um, I have an increased risk of losing the captain. Now, this is quite a good segue into the next uh, bit of the episode. But... Um, this is where you have to weigh up whether you want to keep that unit or fire it. Now, I'm very tempted, unfortunately, to just fire the unit because I don't really want something that's going to increase my risk of captain death, uh, especially when I have the captains that I do. So if we go on to the captains, they're a little bit different to the units that you can hire. I mean, they appear in the same way up here. This is your captain. You only get one a day, so it becomes quite... A bit more tricky to, to hire the captains that you want. Um, but you don't unlock captains in regions. They just literally appear. Now, there is a way to um, get a new captain each day, which I'll show you shortly. But for now, that's where the captain appears. And if you want to recruit him, it'll say recruit new kid. You'll see his stats there. I mean, that guy is an awful captain. I don't even have to pay to, uh, to hire him. So if we look over here, I've got some level 10 captains. Um... Now, they start with, uh, they're always tri-bred captains, which is helpful. Uh, generally, they'll always come with one stat that's higher. So in this instance, um, this captain is a combat captain, which is why he's lined up with my combat. And then if you scroll down, that's a morale captain. But uh, you can see here that they're slightly weighted more to one skill. Well, quite a lot more, double in this instance. So what I tend to do is I try and get, one of each type of captain, i.e. I have a combat captain for my combat ship, a morale and a seafaring. The other two that I have, uh, I don't really have any advice on what you would want to do. Personally, I just have a slightly weaker combat captain. You can see he's level 9, but his combat is only 950. And... Again, I have a slightly weaker seafaring captain. So I'm kind of leaving myself open, not being able to have another morale, but you can only have five captains. So I just I just have these two guys, and hopefully my fourth ship will be either combat or seafaring. If it's not, then sometimes I just have to wait. But if we go back to our top captains, they obviously increase in level as well, and their stats go up at the same time. Um, they can take on personalities, um, which just sort of lend themselves. If we go up here, I think it'll show you. Uh, yeah, personalities, they, they just sort of... In addition to their basic statistics and trait, each captain's personality is listed under their traits. These do not seem to affect the gameplay, but they do affect the appearance and dialogue of the captain. So... Um, Wiki's just explained it for me. They don't really add anything to the ship, but if you go and see them around the port, uh, that just seems to affect the way they interact. Uh, anyway, they also have traits. Now, a captain can have four traits. They never get them at random. 
you will get missions once in a while that will enable you to teach your captain a trait. So you can see on my captain here, I have four traits. That's a maximum. I have loyal, awe-inspiring, fast learner, and plucky. Um, so generally, you're always going to get uh, positive traits, hopefully, on your captain, unless you happen to hire a captain that just starts with a bad trait, which is kind of unlucky, but doesn't happen very often. Otherwise, you're going to get missions up here um, to send your captain out for traits. So you might have a mission up here that will say loyal. Um, and if you select this captain and his crew here, if I only had three, if the mission was a success, I would then earn myself another trait as loyal. So there we go. I've already got it. Uh, let's just go through some of the other traits. I've got eagle eye, tough as nails, eagle eyed again, and loyal. So improved seafaring, chance to avoid death, improved seafaring, chance to prevent captain death. Um, Again, here, plucky opportunities leader. They just add ship morale plus one percent. Um, generally, if you want to, if you want a big list of what all the traits are, they'll be on this page as well. It's kind of useful to look through, but um, the important thing to know is that you send your captains out on missions to pick up the traits. I think all of my captains have four traits now, so I never send trait missions. I just skip through them. <laughs> Um, so that's just a kind of overview of, of what you can do with your captains as well. They are kind of important. And again, my tip would be to have a combat morale and seafaring captain. Uh, the captains that you're available to get, they start, they range from this kind of guy who is free and has terrible stats all the way up to a captain that costs 10,000 chimes. I'll just see if I can find him on here. I might just list types of captain there we go so um you can see the base stats uh in the arc are 50 and 100 and again in the arc 100 and 200 uh and then in the skull so the two they start with 200 500 and then in the hook 350 700 so this shows you that each captain has a speciality stat and they have base stats as well now, the 10K captains, in terms of the cost, are the ones that you want. Um, now, if you look here, you'll see that these three captains I have here are 10K captains because they have very high in their speciality trait. The two here, because they're a lot lower, you can see that they are actually uh, 2,500 captains. Now, I suppose if I was being particularly picky, I would um, sack these two captains and wait for some 10k cost captains to come along and hire them but i don't really need them if truth be told and it's probably more hassle trying to train them up than it is just keeping the ones i've got because now i have all my crew and all the rest of it i'm really only sending out trade good missions for armors and stuff but um it is worth keeping an eye on what captains are available and again when you're lower down in some of the regions it's probably better to get new captains and ones that have the stats that you want. Um, so I think that pretty much gives us a good overview of the types of units that are available and hopefully there's a few pearls of wisdom in there. Um, like I said before, the main thing to concentrate in on is not getting hung up on the ship, uh, on the crew that you have in each region. And generally, whenever I get into a new region, I would fire the old crew in the individual stats and hire the new ones because at level naught, the new crew in a new region are pretty much going to be better than your level six, seven, eight crew from the previous region. So that's the really important thing to focus on. Um, and the same with the captains, just keep an eye. And sometimes when you get these negative stats, kind of got to weigh it up. Do I want a guy that's going to increase the risk of my captain death or do you wait for him to come around again in your crew listing here? So hopefully that's given you um, a bit of insight into your crew and what to do with them. Uh, as ever, if there are any questions or comments, please do leave them on the vid and I will hope to get back to you with an answer. And thank you for watching.